Welcome back to part two. Part two, we're going to look at uh, start to look at amplifiers' views of this circuit. I have two transistors, so either I have one, uh, two single transistor amplifiers, one here and one here. Unfortunately, we have two inputs and also two outputs. There's lots of ways to view this. We're going to look for just the common mode, which means uh, virtually at least that our inputs are tied together and I call this uh, VCM in VNCM VCM in whatever we want we want to say small signal uh, small signal model of this how do we do this well remember uh, I'll draw some pictures here so when VN is going up and down let's say it goes up both of these go up at the same time, their voltages go up. Pin 3 goes up with it. Well, I know that it increases the current. We we'll call this the tail current. Okay, it also increases this. But, we're going to add a big if. If it's a big if, so I'm like circling this. Uh, ease. We say Q1 and 2 are matched. They have the same transistor parameters. If this is a big, big if. That's why when we did this lab, we used a chip uh, that had many uh, transistors on the same chip, and that meant that the these two transistors had very similar uh, properties, like IS. We knew they were at the same temperature because they were within a few hundred microns of each other. All right. If this is a big if. If they're the same, then we can say. Uh, I1 and I2 are about the same. If I1 plus I2, this is I1, is I tail. Remember that's approximate because of our base current. Then uh, this means that I1 is I tail over 2. Same thing for I2. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this circuit. I'm going to draw this out. Hey, I'll be super tricky. All right. I'm going to remove this resistor. Oh, man, I'm being super tricky. Uh, I think we'll remember this is 4.7K. Hopefully. All right. We have that. Oh, that's beautiful. Never done this live. Probably a bad idea. All right, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put a resistor here. A little hippity jump. Hook to my 5 volt power supply. I'm going to put another resistor here. Okay, R, uh, I call this RE2. And R E one. You notice how that these transistors are exactly in parallel. They share the same node on the top, share the same node on the bottom. But I need the same current to flow through the parallel combination. Well, if I just say R E two is two R tail, or two times uh, four point seven K, then that uh, that will be cool. Uh, true. This is a trick. Please, uh, please catch this trick. We're gonna split. Now, I one, you can say I one flows through here, flows through here. It hits this node. It does not just flow through this one. The current divides. This is called a current divider. But it's a big but, a but, 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 but. You can say the same amount of current. It's not the same electrons, because I don't know which if they go left or right. But the same 
current same value of I1 goes through RE1 same I2 number goes through RE2 by Ohm's law I, it's not the same electrons okay so there is current flowing this uh, in here perhaps uh, to the left and to the right but then we can virtually break that connection and we have what what is called the common mode half circuit. I'm going to draw it on the left the left side one. So I have this. This is R1. It's my power supply. Here's my transistor. And here is node X. I called that node X before. R E1. I, call, I didn't call this in A, I call this in common mode. We can only do the common mode half circuit when we have our inputs tied together. Or at least we can do this uh, with superposition. So here's out. Specifically it's out A. And really we're done. This is a common emitter amplifier. And if we know it's a common emitter amplifier, then we're done. Then we're done. Okay. All right. At the very end of this one, I want to go back and take a look. We're going to go back to page two. And I want to take a look at this assumption that we did. Not this assumption, but this assumption of 0.65. Okay this assumption here and also our range when we did this we said that our collector voltage has to be larger than the uh, base voltage to be in uh, forward bias the which junction is this this is the collector this is n npn transistor p n forward bias the base collector uh, PN junction okay I'm going to forward bias this this is the strict definition of what this needs to be but really I'm gonna say we know that the collector can actually be a little bit lower than the base voltage and for the uh, transistor to kind of still work as if it's in active mode as an amplifier and not in saturation mode, which is the mode that it goes into when this uh, junction becomes forward biased also, which technically happens when the collector, when this PN junction becomes forward biased or the collector is lower than the base. I'm going to show you a picture from uh, on semiconductor. their data sheet for the 3904 and 3903 this is the NPN uh, transistor super duper common we're just going to notice that beta this is beta remember DC collector gain beta uh, HFE is another term for that you see it varies all over the place it varies with collector current so even collector divided by base current is not constant and also changes quite a bit with temperature uh, at least double or so with temperature what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on this plot so it's figure 16 I'm going to highlight it because I don't know highlighters are fun in this region here we're going to force more base current this is what's happening on our x-axis we're going to force more base current more base current, more base current, more base current. As we have more base current, the collector voltage drops. Right? We're in active mode. So here, and let's go all the way to say what 0.6 volts? Let's use 0.6 volts. as our boundary okay technically we're in saturation mode 
at this boundary when the uh, collector voltage goes below the base. We're using 0.6 uh, here. Well, you notice that this uh, plot doesn't really change much until we get down to here, 0.3 volts or so. We say 0.1. is saturation. This is a, uh, a bit of a worst case plot, so 0.2 volts, 10 milliamps of uh, collector current. We get this turned on, so uh, a base current of uh, 150 microamps. Well, you see that we have this region here. To here-ish. And then over here, it's we're definitely in saturation. This is on in saturation, saturation mode, down in here. It doesn't our collector voltage doesn't change much. It's a switch, uh, switched on. It's this little region that we're uh, I'm interested in right now. We have this no man's land, this kind of curvy section. What happens in there is is in saturation mode. It's technically yes, it's in saturation mode. Um, but it's it's transitioning out of kind of working as an amplifier. I'm going to use this green region from here or so, and let's just say I I don't know these curves 0.3 volts 0 0.3 0 0.4. I mean this is 30 milliamps of collector current. We usually operate way down over here, uh, one 10 milliamps or less uh, as we have in lab. Let's say 0.3 volts. Okay. Our conclusion for this is if we are in active mode, our transistor are for an NPN. PNPs are different, the voltages are different that the collector voltage the collector to emitter voltage be careful with this has got to be greater than 0.3 volts remember this 0.3 is not a hard boundary but anything above 0.3 we're, we're effectively in active mode Thanks for watching.